Hey everyone, Mama Micah here, and today I'm doing a quick video on my impressions of Quantum Break. I really enjoyed playing this game, but right off the bat there are quite a few things that I wasn't thrilled about. First things first, the story is quite short. I was not expecting the story to be as short as it was, and when the game ended I just wanted to play more. And given the nature of this game, you know, it's obviously not open world, it's a very linear story, so there just isn't more. You can go back and mop up some achievements for making different choices throughout the game, and I always enjoy that. But at the same time, it just wasn't more gameplay. It was really making the decision, quickly seeing how it would affect the game, and then I would exit out. I am going to go through and play the game again on hard for that achievement, but it just wasn't the extra gameplay that I really was hoping for. The game was just overall short. I had so many questions about the story of this game. I had so many things that I wanted answered, and I understand that the accompanying TV show probably had those answers, but I didn't want to have to watch a TV show to understand the game. I really enjoyed the story and I wanted more of it. But I didn't want more of it in the form of a live action show. And I haven't watched it. I probably will. I'll force myself to watch it because I, I just want to. In a way I want to, in a way I don't. I do want to know what it's all about. But at the same time, I don't want to watch a TV show about a game I just played. I feel like if the answers to the story are in that TV show, cheated isn't the right word for it. But I shouldn't have to watch a TV show to get the entire picture about a game. The game should have the whole story. And I feel like the game was so short, there are so many things that I had questions about, and if they're in the TV show, great, but it's not where I want the answers. I want the answers in the game, not in a separate TV show that you have to watch. Another thing that really surprised me was the upgrade system for this game was a little strange. It was very, there was very in-depth, and at first I was like, this is fantastic. When you get your first upgrade point, it gives you a little tutorial. I said, okay, I can rock with this. I got toward the end of the game and realized that I had only gotten one upgrade point the whole time. The upgrade points are like collectibles. You have to find them. And mind you, I wasn't stingy in looking around areas. At the end of the game, I had almost 50% of the collectibles. I think I was right at, you know, 46, 47% of the collectibles on my first playthrough. And I had only found one upgrade point. Maybe it's just me, but these were so hard to find, and I didn't realize that I was missing them because I was getting through the game pretty well. But the final boss battle, I said, oh my goodness, this is difficult. I'm missing something here. And it was upgrades. I had no upgrades. When I was reading forums trying to just understand, am I missing something? Am I doing something wrong here in this final boss fight? What I was missing was upgrades. People were recommending what to spend your points on, and I had no points. Because the game is completely linear, there's no, let me go and find some points. Let me just go outside and see if there's any nearby. It was just you have to beat the game the way you are. And I did, I got through it, but it was completely not ideal. And for finding half of the collectibles, I was really stunned that I only found one out of 60 upgrade points. So to me, something was wrong here. I thought that I was, you know, moderately thorough in searching the area, especially because of the number of collectibles I found at the end of the game. But to have one out of 60, Something didn't add up for me. Now to the good parts. The weapons were fantastic. Every gun that I picked up was really fun to use. Even if it wasn't the gun that I would use, you know, to take out all the enemies, it was really fun to just pick up different guns, see how they work, you know, figure them out. I really enjoyed that. I love third person shooters and I'm always thrilled with just new guns, new things. I just like seeing what people come up with. And so this game was very enjoyable for that. I loved all the weapons. The actual system of your time powers and time manipulation was fantastic. It was almost like combos. You could kind of link moves together and really become really powerful in your gameplay. And I thought that was just awesome. You didn't have to do those things. If you just want to kind of just keep running in and meleeing people, if you just want to keep shooting at people, you can do that. But if you really love the time manipulation, you can get really skillful with it. And I thought that was just awesome. 
And the story, what we got from the story was great. It was interesting. I liked the characters. I wanted to know more. Unfortunately, I think the only way to know more was to watch the television show. But from what I got out of the story, I really liked it and I'd love to know more about it. So this game as a whole, I highly recommend it. I ended up getting it for $47.99 on Amazon. And I think that's the perfect price, honestly. If I paid the full $60, I don't know if I would have been as happy with it. I think $50 is perfect, but the full $60 might have been too steep for me for what I actually got from this game. Let me know in the comments below if you played this game and what your thoughts on it were. Do you think there will be another one and would you want another game? Like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!